Hi guys, welcome to the channel of love. Okay, let's have a check in on this energy. On this Saturday, we are using uh, messages from your angels and tarot to go. I do feel like pulling for the divine feminine and the divine masculine. Let's just say we're going to pull two sides. Okay. <clears throat> Felt two sides to a story. Okay. High Priestess at the bottom of the deck. <clears throat> okay. Let's uh, get some cards. Okay, there's the cards. Let's have a look at the underlying energy. Judgment day. Judgment day. It's judgment. Who's next? Who's next for their calling? There's a masculine here with his arm up and there's a little child and she, she, okay, the little child's a she. She has her arms up. And then there's a feminine here. This angel's pointing to um, this man, this family. Should we say it's a family? And they're saying, you're next. <laughs> you're next. You're next for what? Uh, well, this is about when you put yourself forward to be judged. Okay. Put it that way. Put it that way. We're going to put it that way. I feel like that's kind of like, um, should we say middle ground? Higher realm, lower realm. Okay, let's get a message from the angels for the higher realm. And then for the lower realm, it wanted to kind of turn in reverse. But uh, we can do that. Bottom of the deck. Daniel, I am the angel of marriage and I'm assisting you right now. So we've already sent this card this week. Who's next to be judged? They're going to be judged on this. <clears throat> their worthiness of marriage, of this marriage. Okay. Now, interesting that it's judgment. And then this marriage card talks about uh, letting go all old pain regarding past lovers. So let's read these cards. We will read um, the judgment card first. This trumpet's now blowing into this kind of lower part here. It's like raising them. Okay, let's read Judgment. Major Arcana, card number 20 in the tarot deck. Just before the world card. You need to pass through Judgment to be able to make it out the other side. Let's find the Major Arcanas in here. Okay. Ruled by Pluto, the god of the underworld. An angel sounds a trumpet, suggestive of the final judgment. This is a card of transformation. A fresh start is possible. Is it time to forgive and forget, or perhaps do some soul searching? A promotion may be in the works. I love it how it said the god of the underworld. That's where it's looking to. So let's have a look. Um, it's interesting. I feel like I'm going to leave the marriage card here. And we'll put the judgment card here. Mm, yeah, let's put the judgment card there because this is raising people's spirits who are looking to be um, ascending. Okay, let's have a look at these cards. I'm not sure which way we're doing this. 
we have the Ace of Rods. That's an opportunity from the Divine, a new passionate opportunity here. And then we have the Nine of Pentacles, the Divine Feminine. Okay, she's got a little messenger, a little birdie there. That's her companion. Talking, she's away with the birds, not away with the fairies. No, she's away with the birds. And then we have the Seven of Rods. Now, I actually feel like this is a real strong protective energy here. That this masculine here is protecting the Divine Feminine. Okay, and this passionate opportunity. Let's look at the angel message. Chantel, new romance is imminent either with a newcomer or through reignited passion in your existing relationship. Be open to giving and receiving love. <clears throat> so as soon as we've got marriage on the table, it looks like divine feminine. Someone here is wanting to protect you. It's their opportunity to come forward. Face judgment day. It's the final judgment. And they're going to be uh, protecting you here. Let's um, check out what Chantel would like to say. Chantel would like you to know you have been hungering for more romance and passion and your prayer is answered. Most definitely is Divine Feminine, look. Well, whoever's prayer it is. I feel it's for both of you. But Divine Feminine, you're in your state of being here. So you have been hungering for more romance and passion and your prayer is answered. I am a romance angel and I'm here to help you. New love is on its way to you. You can open the door to this romance by opening your heart. The more that you welcome new love with open arms, the raw, man, the raw, the raw romance, the more romance will come your way. This also means that you must express yourself romantically towards your partner. Be candid about your feelings and intentions. Be playful like we angels are. And most of all, be openly loving with your partner in a way of encouraging the flow of romance to return to you. I will give you guidance along the way and it may involve actions that seem unrelated to romantic love. Yet you will know it's me who encourages you to join a gym, enrol in an evening class or, or meet a new friend, for example. My trademark characteristic is that I create a very strong feeling in your heart and then I surround it with warmth, like I'm going to give you a big hug. The more that you follow my guidance, the faster the romance will be delivered to you. So this is coming, guys. Um, you're going to be uh, cared for, cared and catered for, protected. Not only are you protected by the divine, but I feel the divine masculine is coming in. Okay, Ace of Rods. Something's happened that's made him very protective. He's, he's good to face judgment. Um, okay. Ace of Rods, everything is springing to life in this card. It can indicate virility or the birth of a child. Energy abounds. Could signify the beginning of an exciting new enterprise, career or course of study. It's interesting seeing uh, that this was talking about, you know, being guiding you, being being a guide, okay, guiding you um, in the right direction, and it may be unrelated to romance, the topic of romance, but still you're going to know that it's them nudging you to do this. This is about clearing karma, okay, and actually being there for each other, the counterparts. Let's look at the Nine of Pentacles. A woman stands in a vineyard holding a rare bird. Wisdom, knowledge and talent are present, but no love life. This is a lonely time to be met with a measure of detachment. Success, recognition and wealth will follow. So I'm feeling the, the detachment of the Divine Feminine's energy here. Um, she has a rare bird with her. We've been told to notice uh, the birds and especially if there's any different species of bird. Uh, variant is variants of bird 
Um, so a woman stands in a vineyard holding a, a rare bird. Wisdom, knowledge and talent are present, but no love life. This is a lonely time to be met with a measure of detachment. And I don't feel the Divine Masculine really wants you to feel alone anymore. Seven of Rods. A young man successfully wards off an attack with only a flowering rod. This is the card of the underdog. So the Divine Masculine has managed to get his hands on this rod here. And he's using it to protect you. To ward off an attack. Any attacks on the Divine Feminine. This is the card of the underdog. Despite overwhelming odds, victory is assured. Now is the time to take advantage of the situation. Carpe diem. So it comes in with the Fairy of the Highlands yesterday about it's time to take a stand. Wow. Let's pop this back over here. Let's have a look at these cards. Ace of Cups, guys. How beautiful is that? So, if this masculine's ready, okay, it's the final judgment, he's full of love. That's unconditional love now. Ace of Cups. That's an offering of love. Again, it's an offering from the Divine, and it's being given to the Divine Masculine here. He's praying. Now, on the, the tip of his sword, it's uh, green, so his heart, heart is warming up. I think it said here about new romance. Uh... Whoa, makes me want to dance. Whoa, it's a new romance. Whoa, I look into your eyes. Whoa, best years of our lives. Did, 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 did. Okay, so let's have a look at this because I felt like this was more the underworld. He's the underdog at the moment, but he's about to rise. So you've got a cup of love. And you've got to, uh, what are these? Water lilies? What are they? Um, are they actual lotus flowers? Well, anyway. And what we're doing with these cards, I don't know. We have the Four of Swords, which came out yesterday. I think it was yesterday. And then we got the Six of Pentacles, which is bringing in the balance yourself. So there's children here. He looks happy. This divine masculine looks happy. So I feel like he's happy in his life, but there's no love. Just like the divine feminine here. He's happy in his life, but there's no love. But there's love here. Lots of it. So this love's being offered, or maybe it's, it's like it's raining down on him. Okay. He finds the balance. This is a balance between uh, the spirituality and the physical realm. <clears throat> Let's have a look at the guidance from your angels, and it's Sonia. Okay. It was kind of, well, it was kind of in reverse. We know it wasn't. <clears throat> I put it that way. Um, it says, I bring you a message from your deceased loved one. I'm happy, at peace, and I love you very much. Please don't worry about me. So this is a message from a loved one that's helping to raise the divine masculine. Let's read this. Wow. An offering of passion to the divine feminine. An offering of love here from the divine to the divine masculine for him to bring in balance. And there's a message coming through from a deceased loved one. Let's read uh, Sonia first. Your heart has been heavy with grief. I am here to assure you I am a guardian angel to your deceased loved one. And I want you to know that there is no reason for you to worry. Your loved one is very happy and has adjusted to the transition very well. There is no anger or upset directed toward you, only love and understanding. You have done nothing wrong, dear one, so please don't blame yourself in any way. You did everything that you could and your loved one has asked me to share this appreciation with you. Now when we say about a deceased loved one, this feels very much... Of course, it could be someone on the other side. Um, but we're kind of talking about that now. But actually being 
uh, reincarnated within this lifetime. So I'm feeling that's what's happened with the Divine Masculine. There's Guardian Angel sending you a message saying that uh, he's gone through the transition. Okay. I want you to know that there is no need. Oh, there's no need. There's no reason for you to worry. Your loved one is very happy and has adjusted to the transition very well. This part here, there is no anger or upset directed towards you. Only love and understanding. You have done nothing wrong, dear one. So please don't blame yourself in any way. You did everything that you could and your loved one has asked me to share this appreciation with you. You and your loved ones will share great love between your souls. That love could never die. Although you miss your loved one's physical presence, you have already connected spiritually in your dreams as well as through feeling, hearing, smelling or seeing your loved one's essence. Your loved one is as alive as you are, even more alive in many ways. Relieved of earthly cares or bodily pains, your loved one is freer and happier than ever. As soon as you complete your life's purpose, and it is your time to make the transition, you will be reuni reunited in each other's arms. In the meantime, please know that your loved one is with you often, and that the angels surround you continuously. I would say that the Divine Masculine is getting a look into your life, Divine Feminine. He can feel you and sense you. Smell you. <laughs> smell you. He can smell you. Let's go to the Ace of Cups. Because I really felt that this was the angels bringing a message um, to both of you through this transition. Okay, Ace of Cups. Sometimes, doesn't say that, why would I say that? Sometimes, okay, sometimes streams of life-giving water flow from the lovely chalice. Only sometimes. Ooh, sometimes. The truth is harder than the pain inside. Oh, bright beginnings. Is it the heady start of a love affair? You feel tremendous joy and optimism, fertility, abundance. Okay, there we go. Oh, right beginnings. Is it the heady start of a love affair? You feel tremendous joy and optimism, fertility, abundance. We'll have a look. What's he praying here about? The Four of Swords. The knight reposes in his tomb. It's time to take a break from life's pressure. Precious. Life's precious. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The knight reposes in his tomb. It's time to take a break from life's pres <laughs> pres <laughs> Get it out. Pressures. <laughs> Can indicate someone in the hospital recovering from an illness or a religious retreat. Okay. I feel like this is the religious retreat here that's happening today. I feel I do feel there's this wounded energy that's coming through. Six of Pentacles and the counterpart wanting to um, help to comfort the wounded. The wounded, when I feel like their divine counterpart, yeah. Should we go to the Six of Pentacles? As he measures his wealth. The rich man holds out some coins to the poor. This is the card of the philanthropist. Generosity will be rewarded and loans will be repaid. So acts of kindness, being very sharing and caring here. Helping out the poor. There's been this message as well about the divine masculine uh, being able to accept wealth. Um, because you cannot help um, a poor person by being poor. Okay, well that's the kind of reading, <sighs> at a junction here, let's, um, I actually want to get you some daily guidance from your angels, oh I saw a wedding, 
go into the chapel and we... Well, first of all, maybe we should reread this marriage card. We're gonna get married. Right, okay, that's the card for the top line. Reward yourself, Divine Feminine. Or you will be rewarded, look. Okay. You've been given a lot of yourself lately. And it's time for you to receive. Make the time to reward yourself in a meaningful way. This balance of giving and receiving is essential to keeping your energy, mood and motivation at a constantly high level. So you've been given a lot, Divine Feminine. Giving, 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 and it's time for you to receive, receive, receive. Let's get a card for this bottom line here. What's the bottom line? Wow. It's trustworthy guidance for the masculine here. You received a wonderful idea as an answer to your prayers. This idea is real and trustworthy. You can safely move forward with it, knowing that we are with you every step of the way. Ask for and be open to receiving our support for anything that you need related to this idea. He has an idea. I feel very much it's like this protection that he's put in. I feel like the Divine Feminine, she's been struggling. Been giving of herself too much and it's time for her to receive and the Divine Masculine has an idea. But we have to have a look at this Daniel energy. I am the angel of marriage and I'm assisting you right now. You have called upon God to help in the area of marriage and he sent me to your side. I'm here to help you with a fulfilling marriage. God and I desire to answer your prayer without delay. The first area that I'm helping you with is healing any past wounds related to marriage. In quiet moments, I ask that you be willing to release to me any pain associated with your parents. I ask that you breathe out any negative feelings that you may have about marriage which stem from your childhood experiences. Next I put my hand upon your heart and ask you to breathe in and out deeply. I now ask that you be willing to release old pain or anger toward your first love. As you release these toxins from your heart, I next ask you to exhale old pain towards all of your past lovers. Allow me to clear your heart of old wounds so that you can enjoy a happy marriage rooted in the present. We must release the past to avoid replicating old painful experiences. I'm here to free your heart so that it can fully love with a blissful marriage. Strong message today guys, beautiful. Beautiful. There's nothing to worry about. You are safe and this situation is under the perfect control of divine providence and universal order. Only infuse loving thoughts and emotions into the situation to ensure that the highest possible outcome flows effortless, effortlessly to and through you. The angels send this card to you because you've been needlessly worrying. Worry is a form of prayer that draws to you that which you do not desire. Release your worries to the angels as there truly is nothing to worry about. In fact, your worries could create a self-fulfilling prophecy. The additional meanings for this card. Everything's much better than you imagine. Ask the angels to release you from worry. A happy outcome is inevitable. Avoid worrying lest the negative emotions pull you and the situation down. The angels are with you and everything's okay. Next it's time to go. Let's get an angel prayer.
Is this love that I'm feeling? Is this the love that I've been searching for? There's the card. Oh, we've got two cards. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, we are. We are, we are, we are. First card, I'll say for this line here. Signs from heaven. Thank you, heaven, for sending me reminders of your presence. And it comes in with the uh, Sonia card. I bring you a message from your deceased loved one. I am happy, at peace, and I love you very much. Please don't worry about me. Divine Feminine, you're not to worry about the Divine Masculine. He's actually like worrying about you. And it's like, all this worrying, I know it said you could create a self-fulfilling uh, prophecy. He didn't say negative. So I feel like this negativity, um, this worry for each other, you're not to worry about the Divine Masculine. And he wants you to know um, he's with you. He's with you. Okay. And this will manifest. It feels like it's manifesting uh, the self-fulfilling prophecy. What feels self-fulfilling is that you're actually with each other. It's the love that you've been searching for. Signs from heaven. Angels and loved ones in heaven are sending you signs of their presence. They want you to know that you never walk this path alone and that in times of great need and emotion, they are standing beside you and blessing your heart with love. They are encouraging you to keep focused on signs, such as seeing the same numbers, finding feathers, or receiving visits from angels or loved ones in your dreams. These are signs of support from heaven. Okay, the expanded interpretation. Angels and loved ones rejoice in... Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Angels and loved ones rejoice in reminding you of their presence, but they don't want you to rely on signs to prove they exist. So signs will come to you when you wholeheartedly trust, believe, and know in your heart, soul and mind that your loved ones and angels are there. Hi Jasper. Hey baby, come on in darling. Come on. Come on in. Right on cue, Jasper. So signs, <clears throat> signs will come to you when you wholeheartedly trust, believe and know in your heart, soul and mind that your loved ones and angels are there. Of course, they will send you signs to try and reconnect your faith and belief. But try not to rely on the signs to prove anything. Instead, take them as gentle reminders that you aren't alone and all is well. <clears throat> hey. How are you doing? Okay, let's have a look at this message for the masculines. Express your creativity. Thank you angels for helping me to express my inner creator. So you can see that the divine masculine here, he is creating. Um, he is wanting to express himself. You are a creative being and the angels are encouraging you to tap into your gifts so that you can share your talents with the world. These can go beyond an art form or even music, as you are constantly creating your life. You are being handed a blank canvas by the angels and encouraged to paint what happens next. So it's in the hands of the Divine Masculine, it seems, and the angels. Um, here's a blank canvas here, and he's being encouraged to paint what happens next. The expanded interpretation, creative energy is flowing through you right now. Take some time to express this divine gift that you have. You are an artist with a phenomenal ability to create your light, to create your life in the light of your creator. In order to take the next step, you are being encouraged to paint it, <clears throat> or write or sing about it. Bring it into creation in a loving, expressive way. Well, I'm not sure what he's doing here. He could be painting, writing. Okay. 
You could be writing a song. So you're being encouraged to paint it or write it or sing about it. Bring it into creation in a loving, expressive way. This feminine looks shocked. Okay. Where should we go now, Jasper? You normally like these cards, don't you? Did you allow me to choose one today? I think I've already picked them, hasn't I? I know, you want to go back to them. The bottom of the deck. We're going to have the bottom of the deck. Move your body. Thank you, angels, for motivating me to move my body and energy. Now, whose body does it look like that needs kind of moving? It seems this one here. Move your body. <clears throat> your angels are, are encouraging you to get moving. It's time to get motivated and energised. You may feel stagnant or held back at this time, but the only person who can get between you and your goals is you. Take steps towards anything that you've been putting off and this will get your energy moving and you'll be more open and receptive to new and exciting experiences. Page number 66. Expanded interpretation. You may feel stagnant, but that's okay. Because now is the time when things are beginning to move again. Distance yourself from the energies that are standing in your way and make space for the thrilling opportunities that are being offered to you. If you've been putting off an exciting venture for some time, you're being encouraged to go for it now. Your angels are the wings on your back and they want you to spread them now. Where should, we, where should we go now? To a roomy message? Should we end with a roomy message? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, let's have some coffee. Do you want to help me choose a, a roomy message, Jasper? Alright, the bottom of the deck is the Cloak of Christ. And we have sacred genie and hiding underneath that. Now the cloak of Christ is card number four, the divine masculine's number. Do you want to stand my lap, darling? Good boy. And then the sacred union underneath. Okay, let's get these cards to shuffle. I'm gonna pick a card. Hold on, let me shuffle them one more. Let's just do them one more time like this. Okay. Quick shuffle when it's over to you, Jasper. Ready? Do you want to have a look at these cards? Do you want to take this bottom one? Yep, okay. Oh, hold on, hold on. Which one? Yeah, yeah, I've got it, I've got it. This one. Just how many cards do you want? Hold on, I can't see which one you want. Yeah, I got it, I got it. Oh, seriously, did you pull it out of your teeth? And this one, <clears throat> I feel like we're going to read um, this middle one here, like fully, and then we'll have a look at these other two messages. Put that there. Okay, let's have a look at this one first. What did you choose? Sacred Phoenix Heart, card number 21. The Phoenix is rising. Okay. 21, it takes me to this year. Under the cover of blood, love veils many rose gardens. In total faith, love tenderly guides every lover to the garden of the heart. Reason says the world is limited in six direction. There is no way out. Love says there is a way and I have travelled it many times. Rumi. How I adore your defiant, rebellious heart. It knows that what for the mind is an end is for the heart, simply another match to ignite the sacred flames. 
It eats of love until it is filled and then becomes hungry again and eats some more. And again and again. It eats of love until it is so full it must simply explode into a sacred fire of passion. It bursts, page number 97, it bursts, incapable of sustaining old consciousness in the expanse of blessings unlimited lavished upon it through the great beloved's affection. It would be like attempting to fit an ocean in a teacup so it does not. It bursts forth like a dying star into spectacular radiance only to be reborn again, new and hungry for the next feeding frenzy in love's great banquet. How I adore your defiant, spectacular heart. Let's have a look at this one. Resplendent with grace. <clears throat> 24. Greetings from my heart to you, who are always with me, hidden inside as the heart. You are the compass of my life. My course is your way, no matter where I go. You exist everywhere and in everything, always watching over us. My soul brightens in the darkness when I speak your name. Far beyond the body, there is an opening from my heart into yours. Through that opening, I send you secret messages like the moonlight. I polish the mirror of my heart. Page number 110. Let's move over to 111. I polish the mirror of my heart to be your reflection. I make my ear the receiver for the tenderness of your words. You are in the ear. You are in the mind. You are in every burning heart. What am I saying? You are I. This is my way to describe you through me. Your divine grace clothes me in robes of sky blue and blood red as a shimmering galaxy of compassion within the field of which no being is excluded. The darkness of light is illuminated. And all creatures are bathed in the fine golden hue of your presence. This is only beauty. Oh, this is only beauty. There is only beauty. Be held now, for there is nothing that is not of your artistry, of your divine hand, generous with its grace. Let's look at this final message, and we have one. Card number six. I have a block. I have abolished duality from myself. I have seen the two worlds as one. One I seek, one I know, one I see, and one I call. Let's just pop this down here, guys. You look for me, and what do you see? You. Am I playing games with you? Holding up a mirror for you to behold God? Yes. These are games of love and truth. Look for me and find yourself, for I am you and you are me, and together we are one, playing hide and seek in love's great playground. Like molten gold poured from the furnace of divine love into a one-of-a-kind mould, you are created uniquely and of divine essence. You are both the lover and the beloved. There is no aspect of your life separate from your spiritual journey. And there is no aspect of you that is not of divine origin. So then why the frowning? The fear or the questioning? Let me share a sublime secret with you. Let me whisper it into your heart now. There is nothing to fear. All is unfolding according to the divine genius. And there is a sweet shift in store for you. No matter how dire... <clears throat> no matter how dire circumstances may appear to be, or despairing you may feel, there is still an avenue through which fulfilment and resolution will be granted. 
this will happen. This is because the divine, this is because the divine seeks wholeness of the one. That means anything and every part of existence, and that includes you and all aspects of your being and life, is claimed by the divine. Your return to the divine is demanded, every part of you, every life circumstance. The divine keeps vigorous, flawless accounts. Therefore nothing shall be left unaccounted for, not even that which seems to be outside divine attention and grace at this moment. You must remember that you are a living heart, the dweller at the centre between heaven and earth, star and soil, light and dark. If you cannot summon the joy to rise up and meet the divine beloved, fear not, that cunning lover lies deep within the depths, waiting to gather you into sacred embrace as you descend into darkness. Either through flying or falling, you shall be caught and tangled up in divine embrace. So fear not, cast aside worry and concern. Know that you are thoroughly itemised on the divine ledger and not one moment of your struggle or suffering shall miss the hawk-like gaze of the ever-attentive and heavenly lover. Oh, that's my belly mumbling. <laughs> Hungry. <laughs> this oracle comes to you with particular guidance. There is a friction or conflict within you or your life right now. A sense perhaps of being pulled in more than one direction and confusion because of this. You are questioning which path to take, this way or that. What if you choose this path and it turns out the other would have been better? But how can you know now what choice, if any, is most needed in your life. So many questions, your mind is scurrying. There is no other word for it. Backwards and forwards it goes, to and fro, trying to settle upon the truth. And I love you too much to allow this to continue unchecked. Surrender it, give it up. The truth you seek is this. You shall be. You shall manifest your destiny just as the acorn grows into the oak tree. You cannot be other than what you are, and as you accept this, life responds. It breathes and relaxes around you, so what you need can come to you more easily. It finds you, drawn to the need in you that is natural and inviting, and not a cause for anxiety or distress. The need leads to satiety. What is desired and what fulfills that desire is one. They are lovers that come to each other naturally, even through darkness and confusion drawn to each other, following the natural course of the universe to become one. So do not fret and fear, my beloved. Do not hold back from that which feels incomplete, out of anxiety or distress. It is just the lover that will soon be joined by the beloved. You are recognising the moment before this occurs. So fret not, and instead, let that inner lover loose. Allow her to shake out her hair, put on her most sensuous perfume, and laugh as she dances barefoot in fields of lush green and fragrant flowers. Jasper, Jasper, hey, good boy. Come here. Jasper, stop itching, darling. <laughs> Let her tempt her beloved to come close. Because she can be seen, she can be heard. Her movement sends her scent through the air. She entices the yearning beloved to her, and soon enough they meet, and it becomes possible for yet again two to become one. <clears throat> and then there will be a wild peace and a static contentment within you. If there is any part of you struggling to surrender the conflict between old and new, between what has been and what needs to be, Jasper, babe, get down. Go down. Go down. Go on, onto the chair. Or you have to stop scratching.
So if there was any part of you struggling to surrender the conflict between old and new, between what has been and what needs to be, between passion and duty, creativity and rationality, between this role or identity, then know this, even the conflict serves. Don't choose either one and believe it to be the answer. Sometimes the sacrifice is not one or the other, but the idea that it can be only one or the other. At another level, a level of divine resolution, there is beyond the apparent polarity and conflict a third way, the rising up to where there is only one perfection taking place constantly. Open your heart and you'll find the bridge to understanding and trusting in that perfection there, where it has always been and will always be. Don't worry, all is happening exactly as it should. This oracle brings you particular guidance. There is a resolution and a perfect coming together of elements in your life that might have seemed desperate or in conflict. Something you have been trying to integrate is so very nearly ready to click into place. Perform the sacred honouring ritual and stay with your process. The coherence, the integration, the balance and coming together you seek is on the horizon approaching you swiftly now. Okay, it's a couple of cards that we need to have a look at. What's this? Manifesting miracles, Archangel Orion. Thank you, Orion, for manifesting your miracles in my world. It was a card underneath here. The miracle of prayer, Archangel Sandalfon. Thank, thank you, Sandalfon, for delivering my prayers to heaven. And over here, we have Vanessa. To make your decision, ask yourself, which way brings me closer to my divine purpose? Which way takes me away from it? The sacred honour and ritual. Place your hands at your heart and say aloud, Rumi, who loves me unconditionally, I gaze into my heart and you are there. I gaze into your heart and see my own face. We are one. This oneness is contagious. May it swiftly affect every aspect of my inner world so that my outer existence aligns gently with perfect harmony with the great divine beloved. You and I are one with the perfection of divinity unfolding now and always. Through grace and my own free will, so be it. When you are ready, place your hands in prayer position and bow your head in reverence and recognition to the one divine plan unfolding. Say, I surrender into the one truth of divine perfection, which includes my own divine destiny now. Through mercy and grace, so be it. When you are ready, simply close your eyes and bow your head again. Then you have completed your ritual. And I have completed this reading. Guys, have a fantastic Saturday. Where's my cursor? There it is. Oh, where's my cursor? Um... Have a fantastic Saturday and I'll catch up with you guys soon. Take care, much love. Bye for now.